It is Opposition Wednesday to get so to get caught up on the Panthers. Brought in Rashad from the Panthers Nation podcast. How are you, Rashad? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, bro. Absolutely. How long have you guys been at it there over at the uh, YouTube station? I, I went and checked it out. You guys are doing great. Yeah, yeah, we're doing doing great things, uh, man. And uh, we've been we've been doing this since 2017. Uh, my co-host Dave and I were old college friends, and we we just chop, we've been chopping up uh foot, panthers football for a long time and we said hey let's just record ourselves doing it and uh that's how we got started so we got started in 2017 uh we grew slowly and now we're approaching uh 15,000 subscribers we're at like 13.3 right now so if you're listening uh you know head over to panther nation podcast hit that subscribe button for your boys uh we got draft content fantasy content so even if you're not a panthers fan uh we do have something that you may enjoy so come on over and hit the subscribe button no nah, i love it you guys are doing great things so, look, before we uh, move forward, let's look back. I mean, there's so many uh, things that will unite and compare these two franchises. Uh, when they let go of, when they fired Ron, uh, I'm curious, what, was it the right time in your mind? Did it feel like the right time for the fan base? Was it uh, a half a season too late, a season too early? What did you think and what did the fan base think there at the end? Mm-hmm. Really, really weird uh, because we had a lot of things going on. We had ownership change, right? So Jerry Richardson had his little scandal, um, and we brought a new owner. David Tepper is a new owner. Uh, so just like when a quarterback brings in a new coach, uh, when a quarterback, uh, when a coach brings in a new quarterback, similar to that, a, an owner is going to want to bring in his own his own guys, right? So um, I feel like Ron Rivera is a good coach. Uh, he's a great players coach. Respect him, love him. Uh, and I think he was great here. He was here for a long time, uh, two-time uh, coach of the year, so you've got to put some respect on that. Um, however, I do think that the, the it just wore out. Like, you know, you can, if, if you're around so long and, and things just you're – not, you're not getting over the hump, right? We would get to the playoffs. Um, playoffs wasn't an issue, but we never had back-to-back winning seasons, uh, and that goes before him, so it's not just on him. But Panthers have never had back-to-back winning seasons, uh, and we just couldn't quite get over the hump. So I just feel like – Ron Rivera's coaching style, I think, has a cap, right? He's, again, great players coach, but I think he's only going to take you so far just given his coaching style. Uh, fans here that were uninterested were concerned that the game uh, had passed him by, that that system and way of doing things was antiquated. Did you get that vibe, or are we quick to judge here on that? Yeah, no, I think, I think that is, is a fair assessment. Um, he's a defensive-minded coach. Obviously, the game is going to the offense, the young offensive minds, uh, and so you you definitely can see that. And I don't have a, I I agree with you. Um, and I, I think that, and I agree with the fans that say that. Um, and I, but I've I've seen him do some different things. Um, uh, that again, one thing that he did do here uh, in Carolina was that he did not play young guys. He he would not play young guys for anything. Like he wouldn't. So he's doing some things a little bit different. And right. I've heard him mention that. Hey, I'm I'm not going to do the same thing I did. Uh, same things I did in Carolina. So, um, you know, the young guy thing was really, that really irritated me because we had guys like Brian Burns, right? Brian Burns playing great. We had him playing gunner. Like he was a gunner on special teams. You had DJ Moore, a guy like DJ Moore made a mistake, got a speeding ticket here uh, in Charlotte, benched him, right? Cam Newton got benched for wearing a tie. That wasn't unnecessarily Ron Rivera. That was more so David Gettleman, but at the same time under his regime it's just weird so it's just weird the weird veteran thing that that, that kind of irritated me a lot especially when you have young uh, uh young talent in the wings and just get them on the field I, I would I would appreciate that more from Ron but uh again I think he's a good coach I think he's a good coach uh but I think again like like your fan base is saying hey I think coaching style I, I think he's only going to take you so far uh given the way the game is nowadays the uh the offensive coordinator obviously we're familiar with the last name here and I think the fan base here, well, I know a lot of them ha- are not high on him and assume that's some sort of nepotism hire. Um, 
the league seems to like his creativity. I like what he does on offense. So I'm curious your thoughts on Turner as a play caller. Yeah, Turner. I thought Turner found it out, especially here. Um, he found it out late uh, using Curtis Samuel as a running back. You guys have Curtis Samuel now. Uh, but w- Curtis Samuel was a guy that we struggled with. We struggled trying to figure him out. Uh, and the last year that he was here, or that Ron Rivera was here, excuse me, which was Curtis Samuel's third year, we sort of figured it out. And that was when North Turner uh, kind of let go of the reins and we brought in Scott Turner the last couple games. And we saw the offense do some different things. It, it worked out great. Um, I think it, I didn't get a full assessment of his offensive style because, it, again, it was towards the end of the season. Right. But I thought I thought he did solid. I mean, it, he, he he solved the Curtis Samuel uh, problem that we had. Um, so that was appreciated. Put him in the backfield, moved him around, got the jet sweeps going, stuff like that. Uh, so that was solid. I, I mean, I, I just don't have enough of a conclusion, enough information to make a conclusion on, on his, uh, his, his play style now. You're bringing up Curtis Samuels will make the listeners of this fan base upset and disappointed. <laughs> he only played two games. I didn't pay enough attention to the time there in Carolina. Did he have an injury problem there, or is that yeah. something he picked up here? No, no, no. He had he's had an injury history. Um, he's had like uh, he's had had a heart issue. He had some ankle issues. Uh, he's he's had an injury history here. Um, he didn't play a complete season with Carolina until his contract year. Uh, so you take that for what it's worth. You know how that goes. Okay. Uh, and so. Um, you know, it, he had a great year last year, thousand yards, all purpose. When he's on the field, he's dangerous. Joe Brady figured it out with him last year. Uh, he played running back. He played, he's a, a third down beast. Um, he's a, a good route runner quick. Um, so he's a great player when he's available. I think you guys would enjoy having him when you see him. Uh, but, uh, it's just, again, the, the health issues, uh, it's one of those things, you know, he, he's got to, he got his money. Now we, we kind of have the same thing with Christian McCaffrey, right? Christian McCaffrey was healthy all four years. He got paid. Now this injuries hurt a little different. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want to call players out for, you know, that because I'm not a player and I wouldn't know how I react. But, you know, you kind of put two and two together and say, hey, it is what it is. It's year two under Matt Rule and Joe Brady calling the offense. I, I liked the Matt Rule hire. I'm curious your thoughts on him. And are you are you preparing for life without Joe Brady? I mean, it was the – the hottest hiring candidate last year to not get a job. I I can't imagine he won't get a job this year. Yeah, Joe. So that's couple. couple let, let's unpack that, right? Because Matt Rule, I did not like the hire. I'm going to be honest. I thought there were better options. Uh, Matt Rule's coaching style coming from college it typically does not work. Uh, we've seen that fail time and time again. He Matt Rule is a leader of people, right? He is not a offensive minded coach. He's not a defensive minded coach. He does not have a specialty. So he's a leader of men, right? And the way the game we talked about, we talked about it earlier, the way the game is run nowadays, you need that hot offensive mind. So my, 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 my favorite hire uh, or my coaching candidate that I preferred was uh, Kevin Stefanski. And you see what he's doing up in, uh, up in Cleveland right now. I love Kevin Stefanski. I thought he was the best hire. You pair him up with Andrew Barry in the front office. And I thought that was great. That was a great combination. And I, we tried to get Andrew Barry here. Couldn't get it done because he didn't want to take a lateral move. So, I like that combo better than what we have here. Um, but, you know, Matt Rule, the, he, we were competitive last year, right? What we don't have is a what, – what the thing that Matt Rule – the thing that scares me about Matt Rule is his quarterback assessment, right? We went out and got Joe Brady. We went out I – mean, excuse me, not Joe Brady. Excuse, we went out and got Teddy Bridgewater, right? That didn't work out. Went out – we're still paying him to play for Denver, Denver right now. We went out and got Sam Darnold, right? Picked up his fifth-year option. He's trash. And now our owner had to step in and essentially say, hey, we're rolling with Cam. And so that's what scares me about our our leadership, our head coach. I, he's a good coach. Um, I think that the players respect him. Uh, but, I, again, the college thing is, is a little weird. Um, and I don't know if it's going to work out. I think we have a great, great defense right now. And uh, shout out to Phil Snow, our defensive coordinator, who actually uh, has worked with Matt Rule his entire career. I think that that hire is more important right now than Coach Rule himself, right? That defensive coordination is awesome. Um, and I think Joe Brady, like you brought up Joe Brady, we've been preparing for Joe, Joe Brady to leave ever since he got here, right? We, you said it earlier, that, that hot offensive mind, that's what's hot, right? Everybody wants that young offensive mind. And I feel like, um, you know, we have – his successor in Sean Ryan already in place. 
So whenever he's ready to go, you know, it, it is what it is. I can't see him not going back to LSU, to be honest with you. I think LSU is the best uh, situation for Joe Brady moving forward. But he's a good – I think Joe Brady has been a uh, – a, he's been hamstrung by his quarterback play. Um, he hasn't had a great quarterback. You know, going back to LSU, he had the best wide receivers, the best offensive line, the best quarterback. He doesn't have that here. Um, and so I think it's a, a combination of things that now that he has a, a, a good quarterback – uh, or decent quarterback, uh, I think we'll see Joe Brady's ex- his, his his offense executed much better. But given what we had in Sam Darnold, it wasn't it. So um, I was never more wrong than on Sam Darnold. Yeah, he sucks. I, I really thought that was a Jets problem and not a Sam Darnold problem. Uh, if you can't make it work with Joe Brady, and and, there, and the weapons, I mean, there's weapons down there in Carolina. Then uh, I'm not sure how you're supposed to make it happen. So I, I didn't begrudge. The franchise for for giving up I, I thought maybe they gave up a little bit more than I expected that you'd have to for Darnold uh but Bridgewater I I thought could play this is another stop where he hadn't been able to play and and Darnold um so so, so you back to Cam you did not have that on your bingo card when the season started no, yeah, no. a return for Cam Newton uh, what will Cam look like? And, and Cam's going to start this week, right? Which he is, and I'm surprised by that. If they like PJ, he's only 26. I'm surprised that they've immediately gone to Cam. Are you? I, I am not surprised. And you know what a travesty would be if they did not start Cam in in, in Bank of America Stadium uh, on Sunday. The the place would erupt. It would riot. So he almost has to um, sure start uh, Cam Newton uh, on Sunday. And I think it's the right thing. I think you'll see both quarterbacks. I think there's certain situations where, because we did that last week, right? PJ Walker played well. Um, not he's not perfect. He is a backup quarterback, um, and and you know, and I, I feel like you'll see more Cam than you will see PJ. But in situations where Cam may not have the full grasp of the offense just yet, you may see PJ Walker out there execute a few things. But how he's going to look in the offense, bro? I have no idea. I have no I have no clue. I mean, this is one. It's one of those things. Where, um, you know, I think you're going to see a hefty run game. You, you're going to want to see us get behind Christian McCaffrey, Chuba Hubbard, um, and Amir Abdullah, get behind those guys and, and see what we can do. Uh, last week, we did a great job on the ground against a very good uh, Arizona Cardinals defense. We put up, I think, 167 yards on the ground. So I think they want to take the ball out of Cam's hands and not force him to do too much. Um, and obviously, when we get in those short down scenarios, you better be prepared. Uh, for a Cam Newton quarterback draw, uh, because that's something we haven't seen here in Charlotte until yesterday or until last Sunday. We haven't seen that because the last year he was here in Carolina, um, they didn't want to run him because he was just coming off the injuries, and they didn't want to they, they they didn't want to overrun him. They didn't want to they they wanted to protect him. But now Cam is 100 percent healthy, so you, that you better be prepared for the run, uh, the quarterback runs, uh, the naked bootlegs, things like that. It, it, it's going to be interesting, but I. From a throwing perspective, uh, I think, you know, I, I don't think we're going to push the ball deep very often. Um, I don't think we're going to stress Cam, Cam's arm out like that. So I think you got to have a lot of – pay a lot of respect to the underneath, right? Robbie Anderson coming across the middle, DJ Moore getting those quick screens, getting the playmakers the ball early and let them work in free space. That's what – that's the thing. I think that's Joe Brady's offense, and I think that's what you're going to see from a high level. Uh, when we get into in particulars, it's going to be difficult because I just haven't seen enough of it yet. It was a short sample size. I'm curious what the what you saw from the arm, though, because last year in Carolina, it looked like the shoulder still wasn't right, and there wasn't as much zip as I recall seeing on it. Does the arm look like it's bad? I think the arm is fine. I think if you go look at the Patriots game, some of the Patriots games he played in last year, I thought it was fine. I think, again, it's not a volume thing, right? He'll do it every now and then, uh, but I, I don't think they're going to ask him to throw the ball 20-plus yards 15 times like that's not going to happen I think you'll see a couple shots maybe two to three but it won't be anything where we're just pushing the stretch in the field like that I don't think you'll see that again I think Joe Brady's offense even with Teddy Bridgewater even with Sam Donald is get the ball out quick get it to your playmakers and let them create that's that's the offense so I think that's what you'll see I went and took a look at the roster Rashad before we did this today uh I know I recognize two names on the offensive line the center and right tackle. Is that just me? I mean, is the offensive line playing well? Have they been hit with injuries? Because, uh, yeah. like I said, Elf line and, and Moten. And that was about what I got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't, you didn't recognize Michael Jordan? 
uh, I thought he played <laughs> basketball. Uh, yeah, me too, right? No, but I think but I think that uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that um, you know, yeah, you're right. The offensive line we've dealt with some injuries. Um, however, uh, they played well together last week. Uh, it is a bit of an unknown, especially with the unter- with the interior guys. Uh, you got like you said, Matt. Uh, excuse me, um, Pat F line. You've got uh, uh, Michael Jordan playing uh, right guard, I believe. And then, um, no, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, um, Michael Jordan is playing uh, left guard, and I believe uh, uh, t- uh, Trent Scott is playing right guard. So, again, those guys are, they're fresh. Though they're, they're playing, I think Trent Scott's playing out of position. He's a tackle, but play, he's playing well. Like, those guys are playing well. It's finally a situation where we're playing the same five guys back-to-back week because that hasn't been the case. Um, so, and then Taylor Moulton, he's playing at an all-pro. He's, he's really good. He's a Pro Bowl-level caliber tackle. And then our left tackle, Dennis Daly, played okay. He's a bit shaky. Um, again, Cam Irving is our starting right tackle, or excuse me, left tackle, and he is um, he's out. He's on IR. So you could test us there. Uh, but, again, I think you guys are dealing with some backup, so maybe they can, they can kind of save face there. But I don't know. I don't, it, it's, un, it's unproven, but I think we're, we're going to be able to run the football. I think running the football is what we can do. And if, as long as we can run the football, set up the pass, we'll be fine. But if we're asking those guys to pass protect 40 times per game, it might get ugly. And I like the trio of running backs uh, that you have there. I, I loved Hubbard coming out of college. And if, and if McCaffrey's healthy, we know that. And Amir Abdullah is, is a decent third, third down back. I'm assuming that's what he's doing is kind of that third down role there. Um, and, and, you, and you mentioned this all, and I've gotten the um, – what, what we've been talking about here is run the ball, protect the quarterback, and protect the offensive line a little bit. You can do that with the defense you have. They, they really went for it this year on defense, made some moves in the secondary that, that surprised me just from an aggression standpoint. Um, did it surprise you, particularly early on? I don't know that there were high hopes on this. I mean – Obviously, there are always high hopes on a season. Uh, but to make some of the moves they made, uh, even though really they didn't give up a ton for Gilmore, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the defense. What kind of defense are they running with with the new guy? And, um, and kind of, uh, this coaching staff that, that is no longer here, but when they drafted Haskins, I know for a fact they wanted Brian Burns real bad. Yeah. Instead, the coaching staff did. Yeah, no, I, this this defense, dude, is it's top tier, bro. We're, right now, we're second in the league uh, in in uh, in total yards given up. So, I mean, we're playing lights out defense right now. We play a bit of a hybrid defense. If you'll see some four three looks, you'll see some three four looks. We have a lot of mixed personnel, a lot of guys that have been cast off some other teams that are playing really well in rotation. Uh, so you got guys like Michael uh, Mike Fox, right? Uh, excuse me, Morgan Fox. He's really good. Uh, and then you got guys like uh, Daquan Jones, who used to play for the Texans. He's mm-hmm. starting inside. He's really good. Pair him up with uh, with um, with Derek Brown. Really good. Uh, that pairing is awesome. And then you got Hassan Reddick coming off the edge. Nine and a half sacks. He is balling out of control right now. Brian Burns, like you said, he has five sacks, but leads the team with thirty one pressures. Right. So the guys are yeah. It's it's he may not get there, uh, but he they're feeling him. Did Hassan Reddick play for Matt Rule in college? Hassan Reddick played for Temple, yes. Yeah. Yep, yep. So there's a connection there. So that's why he's with Carolina right now. T- took a I really like cheap deal coming out. I was surprised he didn't um, play better for Arizona. Yeah, took a really cheap deal um, to come here. I think we're paying him like $6 million or something. It's really – so he's, he's – again, he, he uh, bet on himself to take the one-year deal, and now he's going to – he's going to – he's earned himself a nice amount of money. But Hassan Reddick is really good. Uh, so the, the the rotation, Yito Gross Matos, I mean, just this entire defense, it's it's really good. And we get after court after the quarterback, we can stop the run. Uh, it's just really tough. And, and with the number one pass defense in the league, you're not going to throw it on us. With Stephon Gilmore, uh, D- uh, Dante Jackson, C.J. Henderson, I mean, it, even our young dude Keith Taylor, who's a fifth year cornerback out of Washington, is a complete baller right now. Um, and then that's that's not even including J.C. Horn, who's hurt right now. So, I mean, yeah, so, like, and then you got Jeremy Chin. I didn't even bring up Jeremy Chin, who should have been defensive player of the year last year. The, second, no I love, the secondary Young. is loaded. Yeah, no disrespect to Chase Young. I know you guys got Chase Young, but Jeremy Chin was balling out of his mind last year and should have – he should have been in contention. 
uh, for defensive player of the year uh, last year, a rookie defensive player of the year. Um, but yeah, man, so this defense is, is lights out, bro. Like it's really good. Um, I think we make average quarterback struggle. So guys like T- uh, Taylor Heineke, uh, who's your starting quarterback, who is, should be a backup quarterback. Um, I think he is going to struggle against this defense. Um, it, it, the, the way that we're able to move guys around and I didn't even bring up Shaq Thompson, who's playing at an all pro level. Like this dude changed his number from 54 to seven. And I don't know if that's what did it, but he's balling right now. He's, he, I think he's got the number, he's the number two graded inside linebacker on PFF. The dude is balling out of control, right? The sideline to sideline, one of the best linebackers in the game right now. I mean, we don't have a, we don't have a weakness on defense, honestly. I'm, I'm, and I'm not trying to be like super homer. And I would tell you, I keep it like, like it is. I'm not one of those guys that's just going to talk shit just to talk. Excuse me, I can't cuss. But no, I'm not one of those guys that just come up here and just, you know, gloat on my team. But this defense is really good. It's really good, man. And I'm, I'm not just saying it to say it. Uh, they're a good defense uh, and, and obviously coordinated by Phil Snow. They mix things up. They're putting guys. They'll move Jeremy Chin down. You got to c- compensate for him. They'll they'll put uh, Brian Burns. They'll drop Brian Burns back in coverage because he's that good. And it's just it's just hard, man. It's hard to it's really hard. And Stephon Gilmore is going to ask for your favorite receiver or your your best receiver, right? Terry McCoy. I was getting ready to ask receiver. you that. Have they have they been having him follow, or where do the corners tend to stick to their sides? Well, Stephon Gilmore is still getting his feet under him. Right. He hasn't been playing a ton of snaps. Uh, okay. I think he's played about, I think, 20 to 25 percent of snaps at most this year. They're still trying to just work him back in. You know, he came off the pup. He missed like almost the whole year last year. Um, so he's still getting his feet wet. But he did come in um, against Atlanta uh, and shadow Kyle Pitts. He asked Matt Rule. He said, dude, I want Kyle Pitts. And he, he shadowed Kyle Pitts took, and followed him around. Right? Kyle Pitts was destroying the league up into that game. I think he had nine yards receiving. Yeah. And Stephon and Gilmore. It's, and it's the kid from LSU on the other side? Who's, who's the Dante? corner on the other side? So we have Dante Jackson, yeah. uh, who's the number two. He's, he's, yeah, number, we don't really have number one, number two, but Dante Jackson is across uh, on the other side. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, uh, my, my normal co-host on Mondays is a huge Tommy Trumbull guy. Uh, was oh, all yeah, upset yeah. that they didn't take a flyer here in Washington on Tommy. How's he been playing? Is he getting reps? How's he looking down? I know he scored a couple of touchdowns early in the season. Yeah, to- Tommy's been quiet. And shout out to Tommy Trimble. I actually had a chance to interview Tommy Trimble uh, before the season started. Uh, really cool guy, really laid back, uh, down to earth kid. Um, I-, I-, I questioned the pick when we picked him. I think we picked him up in the third, third or fourth round. I can't remember the exact round, but um, he's a good kid. Uh, and the the blocking is what he came in for came here for right he's a nasty nasty aggressive blocking tight end like he's one of those throwback dudes uh, we haven't seen him much catching the ball I think he's had maybe a few catches uh, we've got him on a few shovel passes so like the you know we get down to the goal line they'll put him in the backfield give him a shovel pass he hasn't been a, uh entirely active but we did when we traded away uh Dan Arnold to the Jaguars mm-hmm. uh for CJ Henderson uh, that kind of helped us out. Like he, it helped him out to get see the field a little bit more. Uh, so Is we are Jay seeing Anderson still healthy. Yeah, he's healthy. He's playing. Oh, he's I forgot playing. they picked him up. Totally yeah, we forgot. picked him up too. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's that, that it's loaded. loaded. It's loaded, yeah. man. It's loaded. It's loaded. He's still getting his feet wet too. He's not quite. He's getting there. Um, but though, again, the secondary is gelling right now, and the the pressure that the that the front seven are able to bring it's it's tough, bro. It's really tough. It's really tough for this defense, man. It'll, it'll be yeah. interesting to see that on Sunday because Washington's offensive line has been sneaky good this year uh, for, for, for a unit that really doesn't have any household names either. Um, let's do this. Let's wrap with this, Rashad, and I appreciate you coming on today. Um, if Washington wins, it will be because? It'll be because uh, – I think it'll be because they – they were able to limit our offense and create turnovers. That's that's the only way. That's the only way you have to win a turnover battle to beat Carolina. And if you lose that turnover battle, uh, I think that's what's going to make it tough um, because our defense is going to do it. They're going to do their part, right? If you keep if you win the time of possession battle, you keep our our defense on the field um, and get them tire them, wear them down. That's the only way to beat the Carolina Panthers. If our offense is able to run the football on you guys, 
uh, and, and we're able to put up 150 plus, I know this is a long winded answer, but if we're able to put up 150, 160 plus rushing yards and, and, and win that time of possession battle, uh, it's, it may be a long night for the, for the football team. But um, I, again, I think if you, if you guys can flip that and win the turnover battle, I think you'll, I think you guys will get the W. Hey, go ahead and give us a prediction for what you think the score actually will be. Ah uh, man, so I I gave my prediction yesterday on our preview show. Um, and With listen, my guy George Carmen, that's my man. Yeah, shout out, to, shout out to George, yeah. man. Shout out to George Carmen, real good guy, man. He's he's Super real bright. good. We had fun. We had a lot of fun with him. Um, but there's a there's a lot of things to unpack in this game. There, there, there's a lot. Uh, the, the return of Cam Newton to Bank of America Stadium. The stadium is gonna be it's gonna be loud. It's gonna be electric. Um, the return you know, of Ron Rivera. Yeah, return of Ron Rivera. Um, you know, Cam could be juiced because Ron Rivera passed up on him, right? Um, and he could uh, a couple times, yeah, a couple of times, right? So I feel like you know, there's a lot of guys that Ron Rivera drafted on this team: Brian Burns, Dennis Daly, DJ Moore, Dante Jackson, Ian Thomas, Marquise Haynes, Jermaine Carter, uh, Christian McCaffrey, Taylor Moulton, Shaq Thompson, Cam Newton, right? All these guys played for Ron Rivera, and then there's still guys, um, and this guy's on your squad, right? There's guys on the football team. That our former Panthers, Joey Sly, sure. Corn Elder, Curtis Samuel, David Mayo, Tyler Larson, Taylor Heineke, Kyle Allen, and, Go- and Jordan Kunishek. So all those guys are former Panthers. There's just so many layers to this game. And I just feel like I think Cam is gonna have to calm down. I think it's gonna take a couple of a couple of possessions for him to calm down and, and get his get his feet with the uh under him, get the wherewithal. Just hey, it's just another game. Once that happens, I think. Uh, you know, we'll be able to turn it on. And I predict that uh, the Panthers are going to win this game 27 to 17. I'm rolling with the Panthers. And I, and I think it, uh, they're calling for rain in Charlotte. Uh, on I, 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 looked think, early. I certainly hope not because I'm going to be there. I, yeah, because I was thinking yeah. about going down that one. I, I'm, I think it's going to be rainy there. I looked the other oh, day. No, no, no. It's, it's uh, 63, 63. No, it's cloudy, but no rain. So yeah, okay. we're good. We're good. Yeah. We're good. All right. Yeah, there it's gonna be it's gonna be a great game. I think it's gonna be a tough game. I think I think Washington can obviously can win this game any given Sunday, right? Um, and, but I, I I just think that given your injuries, and that's what I I, I want to get. If I could, don't mind me asking a question about your squad, yeah, right? Talk good. to me about Chase Chase uh, Young and and um and Montez Sweat being out because I think that's huge. Like, what does that do to your defense? It well, I, I'll tell you this: the, the fan base was upset and disappointed with both those guys. I mean, Chase Young, a uh, sack and a half. The pressures were there, um, so you hate to ding a guy. But obviously, you you miss a guy like that. I think um, James Smith-Williams, who was an NC State guy, uh, was, was, was hurt when he left NC State. He's a height, weight, speed guy who I know they're excited about. Again, is he Chase Young? Uh, no, he's not. Uh, same thing with Tuhill on the other side, a guy that just hasn't had very many reps. Another height, weight, speed guy, you know, that – that's another thing Ron and company has done since they got here. Like all these guys are huge Raz and Spark guys. They've totally. they just they just totally bought lumps of clay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And are yeah. trying to mold them. So I don't know. Do you replace those two guys? Obviously not. But those guys were kind of freelancing this season. And I, I know it was upsetting Ron. And he kind of spoke about it last week. I was actually surprised that he came out and called Chase Young out personally on that um so but what what we've been doing now is i mean jonathan allen may be the second best d tackle in the league no disrespect to your guy no no no, you're good he's Um, earned that yeah and then they'll bring ionitis in behind them they've got deron Payne. so so really what it is is they're going to test that center guard combination that you've got even when sweat and young were out there they were generating their pressure up the middle Mm. Um, so that that to me will be the most interesting thing is to see what they can get out of Smith Williams and Two Hill, and then seeing whether you guys can hold up at the point um, because they're going to bring those D tackles. I didn't even mention Tim Settle, who when the year's over is going to make a ton of money from somebody. Um, so that's what they'll do. They rotate those guys in constantly. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if this week we see them move Jonathan Allen out to end. Yeah, George mentioned that too. I think that I think if if they if they do that, I think that's gonna that's gonna be the key because I think you're absolutely right in that 
our weakness is going to be that interior, right? Those guys, although they're ex- they're experienced in other areas, it's untested, and we can be beat up the middle. Like if you if you bring no no quarterback wants pressure in their face. That's right. So if you're if you're able to bring pressure up the middle and even uh, stop the run, because we like to run the football right up right down your throat. Like we're going to run the football. Uh, Christian McCaffrey averaged seven point three yards a carry last week, um, and I'm so. What I was thinking was that, and this is, this is us playing chess, right? And we're just two we're just two guys talking about it. But for me, I want to get Christian McCaffrey out in space. I want to get him out on the edge, right? Because because your strength is in the sure. middle, and if you move him around, you know you were gonna have to you're gonna have to watch him, right? Because wherever he moves, you run the opposite way. Um, and if he's on the edge, I'm running up the middle. If he's in the middle, I'm running up the edge. So it's going to be a big chess match yep. on how they how they can figure that out. But uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. They've been running, they've been running a lot of like 5-2-5 five, five, or 5-1-5 five, five and 4-2-6. And, four, two, six, and um, or, four, two, five, put my numbers together here. But so that'll be the other thing. You know, they bring bringing Landon Collins into the box a lot more where he belongs. Um, so, yeah, I, they, they met the teams to me as I look at them, um, sneaky similar. Very and and that should make sense, right? Because even with Matt Rule, even if he brought in a totally different philosophy, you can only switch a roster, but so much in two seasons. Um, so definitely has the footprint of of one guy on both. So no, I, I think it'll be interesting. And Washington wants to do the same thing on offense that you're talking about. I mean, they'd like to be able to run the ball, pound the ball, and the same thing. I mean, Taylor Heineke ain't winning a, a throwing competition down the right. field against anybody. Right. Right. So it's a lot of crossers and, and posts. Very, yeah it's very similar very similar even if you look at the rankings like we rank very similar um only thing where we you know kind of take a take you know we're, we're winning uh obviously is on the defensive side right I think we're a much better defense but outside of that everything else is is the offenses are your your offense may be even slightly better than ours uh just because we dealt with Sam Donald and you guys didn't have to uh but but uh, but yeah, I think offenses rank very similar. I, again, I think the wild card is Cam, right? How how much does Cam improve it? Because I think Sam Donald took us out many games just turning over the ball. Uh, yeah. And had we had a competent quarterback that just didn't turn the football over, our our our, our record would be much better than what it is. I mean, we're five and five, we're doing fine, but uh, we we left a, a lot on the field uh, just due to Sam Donald's turnover. So, when you know how it goes with Ron, the teams tend to get better. As the year goes along, yeah, true. this team this team was one in five last year and struggling, um, and and you know I mean they didn't end up but seven and eight, but I mean they got on a run and got hot. So for Washington, and I don't know, I didn't check the rest of the schedule for Pan- for Carolina, but you know it, it's you guys, and then it's the Raiders, and then it's the Seahawks for us, and then we get into the division. So if ever there was a time, I mean they both this it, it's amazing a, a game and a half I think back of Carolina. This is a game that both these teams. Yeah, we need it. I mean, these yeah, are we need games it. for both teams for sure. We need it right now. We have the seventh spot, uh, the wild card spot, and uh, we could we essentially control our own destiny, right? We, if we win out, uh, we win the division. So we need every game. Uh, we have you guys. We have uh, the Dolphins, uh, and then we have a bye. So that's very important. So we need these two games. We hit that break hopefully on a high note. And then we have the bills, right? So we got, that's a tough game after, sure. after the buy it's, it's tough. We got, I think Atlanta first and then the bills, Tampa saints, and then Tampa again. So yeah, it's, it's, we need all these games, every game yeah. we need. There you go. So Rashad, thanks man. I had a blast doing this. Remind the people where they can find you and what y'all got coming up next. Yeah, man. So you can follow us on Twitter at Panther nation PC, a lot of good stuff going on there. Uh, go on YouTube, search Panther Nation Podcast. Um, again, help us out. We're trying to get to 15,000 subscribers, so make that thing happen. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, and you may not be a Panthers fan, but when we get do get to 15K, we are giving away a signed uh, Cam Newton mini helmet. Uh, so that's super awesome. Uh, and, yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it. My co- Shout out to my co-host, Dave. He could not make it today. Uh, but, yeah, man, w- coming up, uh, I don't know what we have coming up. We're, we're going to – and we go live every Monday, so we'll recap this game on monday and then we'll just go repeat the cycle with the dolphins next week so it's all fun man a lot of draft content coming up uh it's it's, it's football 24 7 365 over at panther nation podcast so appreciate that thank you rashad man i appreciate you yep sounds good bro